Okay, so welcome back students. So let me start with where I stopped in my last class, which is uh, the Gram-Smith orthonormalization. So these are the uh, formalism using which I can figure out uh, a set of orthonormal bases by using a set of linearly independent uh, vector. So, linearly independent vector is given from using that I am uh, going to find out a set of orthonormal basis. So, if I uh, look it in this way, so for example, mm, this quantity try to first figure out what is the meaning of this notation. So, one notation I use this what is the meaning of this notation. So, normally we know how to calculate this, but this I do not know. So, if I write this as this way, so y 1 say let me just write y to make it simple because I need to use the component. So, say y 1 and y 2 are the two components of the vector y. I need to calculate this this notation. What is the meaning of this notation? First, I need to find out. So then, y, which is in uh, this this is a bra notation and this is a k notation. You are familiar with this notation. I can need I need to write this in this way. So these things, whatever I am writing here, is uh, coming from this dual space concept. So, you know about this. Here since y is a real vector, so I am not going to write this as a star. Normally, in principle you should write it as star. So, now this quantity in the vector notation these and this can form something like this. So, operation is this and this. So, y 1 square, y 1, y 2, y 2, y 1 and y 2 square. If it is not y 1, y, 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 if it is x, y, for example, if it is something like this, the result will be x 1, x 2 in general y 1, y 2 in general and it will be x 1, y 1, x 1, y 2, this multiplied by this, this multiplied by this, here, here, this multiplied by this, this multiplied by this. So, this forms a matrix and this is called the outer product that is the name. This is called the outer product. So, that means inner product we are having a from this I am having something a scalar that we know. When I do the outer product of two uh, vector by taking in this way, I am getting something uh, which is matrix 2 by 2 matrix which behave like an operator. So, this is something that is operating over something. So, what is the meaning in there in this uh, Gram Smith orthonormalization process? What is the meaning of that? So, let us try to find out. It is nothing but y i y i this quantity is called the projection operator very important term projection operator. If a vector is given along this direction and if this is the direction of say y i if I operate this quantity which is now behave like a operator. If I operate this quantity over this vector given vector x, it essentially means that I am taking the projection. 
if I say this projection vector, this projection vector x p say I write this as a new vector x p which is the projection of this x vector x p. So, what will be my x p? x p will be this quantity. And which is quite simple if you if you try to understand that then y i x this quantity is nothing but the dot product or this quantity multiplied by the vector direction this. So, it will give you the vector along this direction. So, that means it is projection along this direction. So, in this case try to find out how this projection operator works here, especially here in this particular case. So, this equation was y 2 was something x 2 minus y 1 y 1 x 2. This was uh, my y 2 prime, how to calculate the y 2 prime that is that. So, my x 2 was in this direction, say this is my the direction of my y 1. So, this vector is the x 2 minus the projection. So, projection I just say that this vector is this one. this is the x p the projection vector that I do and here what I am trying to do I am just trying to find out that what is my x 2 minus this. This is my x 2 vector and if I if I subtract from this vector then essentially what I am getting is this vector. This vector is nothing but x 2 minus x p this vector, this perpendicular vector. So, now you can see that x 2 vector is giving to you x 1 was also in this direction because y 2 is nothing but x 1 mod of this quantity. So, it is has to be this direction. So, now using these and this vector I can figure out another vector which is perpendicular to y 1. So, this is exactly perpendicular perpendicular to y 1 and which is x 2 minus x p. x p is nothing but this projection operator thing. So, that means, I calculate this one then subtract from this and this I will get a new vector which is perpendicular to this. So, this is the concept every time if you able to do that you will start getting a vector which is perpendicular to the previous one and with this you can calculate uh, the entire set of vectors which are which are part which are orthogonal to each other. So, now let us uh, find out more about this projection operator. So, if say E 1, E 2, E n are set of n vectors which are linearly independent of each other as well as orthonormal. So, that means they are forming orthonormal set mathematically means this is satisfied, this thing is satisfied. If this is satisfied, if these things are satisfied, then any vector can be represented in this form that is one issue. Second thing is that I need to find out this quantity. This is a projection operator along any direction i, any preferred direction. So, there will be different direction. So, 1, 2, 3 is corresponding to the different direction. So, i is a some direction and now I try to find out this quantity. So, 1 to n. So, sum of all this quantity. So, sum of all this quantity is essentially the meaning of this 
is that I try to project all possible direction of a vector. So, what will be the value of these things? This will be an interesting uh, thing. So, this is a projection operator along i direction. Now, I try to find out uh, the summation of all the projections. So, if this is a projection in i, if I run this i from 1 to n, so it essentially mean I try to find out this quantity e, e i e i plus e 1 e 1 plus e 2 e 2 plus e n e n. What will be the summation of entire things? All the projection operator if I sum, if they are uh, orthonormal to each other then what I am getting? So, let us try to find out. So, I need to find out this. So, what I will do that I will take a vector x. This vector can be decomposed by this basis. So, E 1, E 2, E n. So, this is the decomposition of this vector along the basis. Now, I need to use this over that. So, I will what I will do that I will project this projection operator entire projection operator over x big x and try to find out what I am getting in the right hand side. So, essentially what I am doing I am doing these things. What is my x? x is x 1 u 1 plus this. So, this is my this is the thing I want to operate over that and try to find out what I am getting. So, term by term if I look that what will be my first term it will be i and it operates over the first term. So, i and i it will give 1. So, i will first term will be this. All the second term, the second term will start at 2 and uh, 2 and uh, if I say this is 1, then it will operate over this and this and this. So, if it is 1, then it operates over this and this 2 and 1 will cancel out and 3 and 1 is cancel out. So, all the other term will going to vanish. The second thing is that the next term which is e 2 which is e 2 e 2. So, e 2 e 2 when I operate over this first term it will going to vanish because e 2 and e 2 will going to merge and gives a 0 value. e 2 over that we give 1 because this thing over this operation give you some non 0 value. So, my next term will be something like this. In the similar way my third term which will going to survive is something like this up to n. So, what essentially after operating this over that what essentially I am getting my old vector which is x. So, I operate a projection operator over x as a result I am getting the my old vector x. So, if I write this here then I should write it 1 to n e i e i that operates over vector x minus vector x is equal to 0. I take this x this side and my equation is something like this. From here you can write a very important expression which is essential in quantum mechanics also. this one is basically a matrix because just before I show that these things this quantity 
gives you something which is matrix, the matrix form. So, I should write it 1 because I am taking x common out of that. So, if I take x common out of that as if this is 1 normally, but since this is a matrix operation, I need to write 1 in this way. You should understand that this is an unit matrix. So, now <coughs> from here I will have a very important expression this is a special name of that this expression that projection operator over entire all the direction if I take it essentially gives you the unit vector uh, the uh, something uh, unit matrix. So, this is called this special property called completeness. A special thing called completeness. So, now I can check that in principle th that uh, whether this is giving you some, some kind of completeness things or not with my usual basis. So, that uh, quickly uh, to understand how this is working. So, let me do that for 2D, for 2D, which is easier. E 1 E 2. I know that these two are orthonormal basis. If they are forming orthonormal basis, readily they will follow this rule. Uh, sorry, here I am writing uh, wrong expression somewhere. It should be something like this. Orthonormal this. I, by mistake, I write uh, the projection operator notation. Please note that. If you note that, please correct it. So this is uh, the orthonormal, uh, the concept of orthonormal basis. So now, uh, from the orth concept of orthonormal basis, I have E1 and E2 which are orthonormal to each other. Now, I try to find out this quantity summation E i E i i runs from since this is a two dimension n is 2. So, it will be 2. So, what value I will getting E 1 E 1 this will be my first term. If I expand this summation sign and my second term will be E 2 e 2 no cross term will be there there is no i j please note that there is no i j. So, this term now you know how to calculate this outer product. So, it is 1 0 1 0 uh, this is 1 0 1 0 plus 0 1 0 1. So, my first term is 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 0. So, 1 0 0 0. My next thing is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 this much and this multiply 1. So, if I add I am getting just 1 0 0 1 which is nothing but the unit matrix of order 2 because I am taking uh, this two second order. So, I will get if you do that for 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 3 D you will also get something 1 1 1 and so on. So, I can show that they are forming these things. So, let me write down the properties of the basis E have. So, so far we have two properties one is E i E j is delta i j which is called orthonormal property I write O n. Second property that I have which is called completeness.
which is called completeness. Apart from these two, another important property that also this uh, basis holds. So let me let me write it. Say a matrix in two D, a two by two matrix. I write this matrix in a component form where these are the components. Please note that if I write this matrix in this form, I can decompose, I can decompose this matrix in this way. Exactly like a vector, I can decompose my matrix in this way. this is the total decomposition of the matrix. So, what I do that I will just multiply with some some matrix which is this form. This is called the basis like the vector this is also called the basis, but this basis is for the matrix decomponent uh, uh, decomposition. So, this basis is coming from this matrix decomposition. So, this is one basis, this is another basis, this is another basis. The mo most natural basis one can have. <coughs> In 2D, by the way, E1 is 1, 0, natural basis, E2 is 0, 1, natural basis. I can write this expression, this quantity in terms of E1 and E2 also, just before I have just did it. So, 1, 1 will be how much? It will be E1, E1. 1 2 will be E 1 E 2. If I take the outer product of E 1 and E 2, please do that, then you will get this, this matrix 2 1 is E 2 E 1 and finally, 2 2 is E 2 E 2. So, I can divide my entire matrix in terms of this kind of operator, which I define as a projection operator, but here this is a projection operator, but this is not a projection operator, because 1 and 2 are here. This is not in the same, same, uh, uh, same, same direction. So, now uh, what I am trying to find out that if this is given, how to find out the matrix element out of that. So, matrix is given where these are forming a basis. So, how do I get the matrix element? So, this is my entire matrix A. So, in order to find out A i, what I will do? I will first operate E i over A this side and E i over A in this side. Sandwich, I make a sandwich A with operating from this side and this side. In right hand side, what I will get? When I operate this from the left side, I will have a quantity like E 1, E 1. When I operate from the right hand side, I will have another quantity E 1, E 1. This is 1, this is 1. So, I will have A 1. What about the other terms? If you look, that when I make a sandwich of this, it will give 1, but when I make a sandwich of E 1 to E 2, so let me write it, then it will be maybe clear. So, A 1 2 is simply E 1 E 1, it is ok, but then E 2 E 1, this is not ok, this is 0, because they are uh, uh, perpendicular to each other. So, dot product or inner product between E 1 and E 2 is 0. In a similar way, I can also find 2 1 which is 
e2 e1 and then uh, e1 uh, e2 uh, let me so it is e1 e2 and then e1 e1 using this again i will find this is a zero and finally the last value 2 2 which is both e2 so and i am sandwiching then e1 so i will get e1 e2 and e2 uh, e1 e2 and e2 e1 this is also zero so this zero this zero this zero this zero so two a two 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 one one two is not going to come into the picture only thing that is there is a one one so i will have my a one one component readily when i sandwich this so if i go with that then i will find with the same treatment i can find a two one with the same treatment i can find a one two with the same treatment i can find a two two this so now another important property the uh, e one e two e three has which is here if i write the third property which is if i operate this e i over a matrix e j i will get back the matrix element a i j this is called the matrix element so this is called matrix element so what uh, in conclusion what i find we find that e1 e2 e3 en are the n basis in n, n number of basis for dimension n it follows three important property which is orthonormal property second thing is that they are complete it is a completeness property and third property that this is a matrix element so matrix element can be find out by these things so when this uh, three properties are followed by this basis uh, we call this a natural basis obviously because naturally it is coming and it is very important to know that these three properties are followed are coming from the concept of inner product only so inner product if you know correctly then you can find out all these things all the concept are coming from inner product with that uh, today i would like to conclude here in the next class we will go with more uh, important thing which is called the basis transformation where we may require uh, the concept of this these few things so let us uh, uh, find out uh, how the in the next class how the basis transformation is working how a vector is changing in another basis if i a vector changing to another basis how the vector formation can be put into that uh, that are the few topics that we we'll like to cover in the next class with that so thank you and see you in the next class